So, introduction to uh, Scala. When it comes to it, it's a general purpose programming language. I don't have to tell much about it. Yes, it is. It is typically, uh, you know, the, the main thing which, which uh, keeps it completely apart from the other languages is it supports both object orientation as well as the functional programming styles. Okay, both of the styles are available. So you don't have to, uh, uh, you know, let's say talk about uh, some Spark app. The way you are going to write your application is going to be completely different versus the way you are going to write your normal programs. No, you don't have to worry much about it. Right? Whatever program programming style suits you best or your organization best, you can use that. The other thing, probably I don't know how many of you people are aware of it, but there is a new version of Hadoop which is coming. It is not from Hadoop, uh, sorry, it is not from uh, Apache. Uh, it is being completely written in Scala. So, Scala is already supporting SPA. Scala is already supporting Akka. And the same Scala is now going to support the next versions of Hadoop. I don't know how far or how, how popular it is going to be, but definitely, uh, you know, uh, it will just change some of the things, right? What is the version of Hadoop called? See, this is like, uh, uh, it, is a, it is being released by a university. Uh, Stephen, I have just forgotten the name of that. Okay, do you think Java 8 will kill Scala movement? especially because most of the companies in experience program have invested in infrastructure and knowledge on Java programming. <laughs> Very wide statement. Simple thing. Uh, Java 8 is trying to imitate. Okay, Java 8 is simply trying to imitate Scala. So, I don't know. Money changes a lot of things. Yes, I agree with you. But only time would tell. Right. Okay, I think uh, I, I'll come back quickly. I'll come back quickly to the point here. By the way, that's what is the point. If you are good with Java 8 and if you have adopted it, but the question is how many of the companies have adopted Java 8? Either the top notch or the startups. Now both top notch companies as well as the startups are very low. The majority is those body shopping companies, uh, sorry, sorry for the language, but Infosys, Wipro, TCS, Satyam, right? Big uh, headcount companies and all, right? By the time they will, they will embrace Java 8 or, you know, these things, probably world would have moved, I don't know, where exactly world would have moved, right? So that's the point. What is the segment we are talking about? If we are talking about the top notch or the startup kind of a segment, they would always be ahead of the curve. They would always be taking the latest technologies. But you, if you talk about those kind of mass companies and all, uh, I don't know. It would take quite a long time. That's why I don't really have the answer for whether Java 8 would kill or something. Anyway, another division. Anyway, coming back quickly here. So guys, uh, basically, you know, Martin is the main guy who has actually developed Scala in 2000, uh, you know, uh, one, and it has become quite popular. I don't need to tell about it, right? I just gave some of the examples of it. Scala is statically typed, yes, just like Java, it is statically typed language, okay? So I hope everybody understands it, right? What is statically typed and what's a dynamically typed language? If you have got uh, to work with Python or Ruby or uh, you know any other kind of uh, you know those languages they are typically dynamically typed when you talk about the dynamically typed language basically the type of the variable is uh, you know bound to the value referenced by a given variable so what I'm trying to say is let's say uh, uh, you're saying variable a whatever is your uh, syntax. I'm not going into the syntax. You say variable A is equal to Vishal. Okay. Now, variable A is equal to Vishal and that's it. And then you are trying to perform some operations, whatever you want to perform on that uh, uh, variable. You don't 
you never said that it is a string okay first thing is it has assumed it as a string this is not dynamic typing this is not dy dynamic typing by the way this is called type inference okay i'll come to that but two lines or let's say 10 10 lines af after 10 lines of code now you are saying variable a is equal to 10 right in java it will be a problem in scala also it is a problem because here the variable is bound to its own type through its entire scope so until and unless the scope of a is there you cannot really refer a as anything other than the string you can assign instead of vishal you might assign it as let's say amitabh or somebody else right assign it very good but you cannot assign it as 10 whereas in the dynamic type languages like ruby like python it is very common practice that you use the very same variable uh, you can use it for whatever you want right as a float as an integer as a uh, date as a, a string or as an other object you can do very you can do all of that very well that's the typical difference between a statically typed language and a dynamically typed language just in case if you were not aware i hope this example has helped you right guys am i are we all good with it okay great now it's a mixed paradigm language yes uh, fully supports object oriented programming everything is an object in scala yes but unlike java see this this is very good point here unlike java scala does not have primitives right you have small end you have small you know float and all right but there is nothing here there are no primitives in scala everything is an object okay now this is very important in fact the concept of object and a class even though it is same there is something called companion object okay uh, in scala we'll come to that don't worry about those parts some of those very beautiful things which are there in scala which make it much more powerful than java okay uh, another thing supports static class members through singleton object concept now this is very interesting point uh, why do you use static classes in java guys what's the typical use of static classes static class members static methods or static variables and all why do you use them because you typically want to go for no no not just singleton classes probably the purpose the business purpose the business purpose of that would be to create typically kind of you know your utility classes right math dot square root right that's the main purpose so singleton classes are these are all technical answers yes we need technical answers but again they are driven by business reasons right so the reason behind it is simple that you do not really want to create uh, multiple instances of it and several other reasons not really going into that you know depth but yes here it is also supported but in a different way okay that we call companion objects we'll talk about that you can just create a simple object itself in class in 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 uh, uh, you know scala without creating a class of it wow this <laughs> doesn't it seem a different thing to you creating an object without a class right but yes those are some of those typical things which happen <laughs> okay improve <laughs> improve support for i'm sorry i'm sorry i i i'm just trying to assume the things from your eyes or you know from your mind the way you would be thinking about it uh, okay that's why i'm just kind of smiling on it improve support for oo uh, object oriented programming through traits it's like I don't know if somebody has done programming in Ruby. I have done quite a lot of programming in Ruby for almost three years. So, in fact, Hadoop is streaming. I have written in Ruby only. Okay. So now uh, uh, it is uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, you know uh, you have to support multiple in inheritance and all. That is something which is uh, kind of uh, supported through traits. And if somebody is aware of modules in Ruby. Okay, you can think of traits as ditto copy. There is absolutely no difference. Okay, next, uh, 